episode 72 2024 recap part two when it comes to goals or like i think this whole year has to be has to be taken as for myself 100 percent successful year my handicap's the lowest it's ever been i've shot my lowest score on a on a par 72 course i've ever shot um I'm, i've walked the course more than i have in the past four years um so all those things combined, it's like this is this is probably the best year in golf I've ever had. See, and it's funny because I, I mean, I, I would agree with that for you and and as well for my game. Um, but it's funny because I've played less golf rounds this year than I have in the past. I have too. But I, but we, I feel like I, I can't speak for you, but I feel like I've spent more time working on things with a purpose, yes. like like finding my driver swing and doing you know, doing, doing drills on the range instead of just hitting balls. Like when I just say, I'm going to have a range day and I'm like, I go down there with a plan and this is what I want to work on. And I don't allow myself, I, I have the discipline to just stay within what I'm trying to do. And, and that's made a massive difference. Um, I, I worked a lot at the, the chipping green down there. I spent more time doing that, working on my wedges, my chips, um, Oh, you can tell. And, like and you, you got some nice checkup and, in your chips like lately. I, like, I, like I said earlier in the pod, it's like um, my approach game is putting me into bogey territory, but my my chipping and my putting is keeping me from the doubles, right? Well, and you're putting so much better. This is wow. the, probably the best you've ever putted, right? Like we made we made a. Did you are you still using the same or the changed putting stroke we talked about or you no? Bet, yeah, you bet one hundred percent. It's it's almost identical to yours. Oh okay. Yeah. yeah. And I use. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't watch. I was just thinking about. it. I'm like, I never watched today to see what putting stroke yeah, you were using. Yeah, you bet. I don't use the claw anymore. I went to the, the two thumbs, kind of one, the right thumb lower than the other, and and. That's well, your lot. Your, your pace is your pace, pace and line are a lot more consistent. You bet. You bet. And if I can keep my head straight over the ball and hit the ball before I look up, my putts are way better yeah right and i focused on that a little bit today and, and it kind of showed in some of my my weights and again i left a lot of a lot with an inch of the cup today and i mean that's what i'm going for it's like well, you take that as a positive because because i mean when i'm thinking when i'm stepping over a birdie putt unless it's like within four four or well within like six feet i'm thinking let's get it close let's miss close let's i close mean it's always always have a yeah. chance but but you're probably thinking miss close to allow you for a tap and par, right? And I mean, if you're doing that, what you you have been, I mean, that's gonna shave strokes like crazy. You bet, because well, yeah. it's it's bogey avoidance is it, what it is. It, my handicap is showing it. Yeah, that that's part, of, and that came after my mental change of no fear. You know, always going to the golf course with with a hesitancy or butterflies is like, okay, this could be a really good day, but you know what? This could be the worst day to go play golf type thing, and and. Just taking that and switching. It took me, dude, like almost four years of playing golf to turn that off. But it's but it's funny you say that because I I, I mean earlier in a couple a uh, couple episodes ago you we talked about this and you're like you know I took your mentality where it's like you know you you give up a three here or a, or a quadruple bogey here whatever you you work your way back to bogey golf right and it's funny because I said to you today I was like after I hit a great drive on one and I'm like you know I was like. Taking an iron or you know a lesser club off the tee doesn't guarantee you shit. Yeah, you could still have a shitty shot because yeah. I've done it many times. And today I'm just like, I'm gonna take a page out of your book. I'm gonna go no fear, like number five, right? Number five is a shorter par four, and I always try and go like five high or five hybrid. And lately I've been yanking it left, and I'm in the trees. So I, so you were walking back from the bathroom. And I had I had my driver in my hand, and you walked it. you walked right by or right right up as I was swinging, and I smoked it straight up the middle. You almost hit the green. Yeah, and, and I was like, I, I mean, my thought process was I was gonna pull the five hybrid out, and I'm like, no nah, man, like what's the worst that could happen? Like you hit the driver, you could be in the same shit, or you could be in a better spot. Yep. Yep. So I mean, and that's kind of the no fear mentality, right? Like I mean, that's the that's the mindset that that's changed in both of our games. We have. Uh... Down the road here, I have a few golf coaches, mental golf coaches that will be joining us on the podcast. I'm, I'm interested to talk to them about this whole mental aspect of the game because it, it has been the one thing in my game that's held me back for the four years that I've been playing. Right. It's the mental part of the game. And now I've kind of turned a corner, but I was always, when I would go play golf, I was always worried about the result of the shot instead of um, hitting a shot that I knew I could make. Yeah. 
I was always worried about the result before I even hit the shot, right? And now it's like, okay, if you know the club you're hitting, all you got to do is just make good contact with the club. It's either going to be a good shot. Or you, I don't normally shank shots. Yep. So for me, it's get it towards the green because then that chipping and putting game comes into play and, and that's better than it's ever been. So, so, so I mean, here's the, here's the thing, right? We'll put it back to something you can, you can relate to. Like, in a hockey game or in a sport sporting environment, I mean, you, you and I coached together for years, yep. and I mean, we've co- we coached different sports. And, I and mean, we, and we've coached in some high pressure situations, hundred percent. And that doesn't bother me remotely as much. Where where I was going with this was, you have, you really can't dictate the outcome. You can dictate how hard you work and how much effort you put in. But the outcome is kind of a lot. Part of it is luck, yeah. right? And I mean, in golf, a large part of it is luck. It's like yeah, you, sometimes you'll hit a great shot and you'll get a bad result. Sometimes you'll hit a bad shot and you're, you'll be like, "Oh, cool! I got to bounce into the fairway. That's yeah. awesome." I got a couple of those today. Yeah, you got but some ginger luck. Like, like I'm getting up to hit shots, already worried about the result. Right. And I spent four years playing that way. Yep. Right. And it's amazing. I've got a, you know at least somewhat better, but making that mental change of of being confident in the shots that you're hitting, like I'm I'm uh, I'm confident in my distances. I'm confident in my clubs. Um, and just just knowing it's like okay, well this is this is a seven iron out. Just this hit, is the club I need to hit. Just make a good now, swing. Just right. And again, I've worked on my swing over the last few months even when i had my i guess when i when i was playing poorly for that six week period i was still working on my swing yeah yep and i think i mentioned about that um, bernhard longer video about shoulder turn getting and getting the shoulders turned and i'm really working on that oh dude you can see in your driver distance right like you're putting on distance i mean today the the balls weren't flying very far. <laughs> no, let's be honest. But I mean, but again, when, I was clubbing up one club for every like. If oh yeah, but on your swings, you you can definitely tell in your distances, right? And that's the biggest thing from day one when we started golfing till now is that I think is that if you are confident when you step over the ball that you have the right club in your hand, yeah, what a game changer! And that comes with over this winter. There might be a uh, there might be a fitting coming into play, and and you know fitted irons in Alan's bag for next year, but we'll, we'll see how that plays out over the winter. I, I, it's time, right? It's it great. is. It, it's it, that's great. the next evolution of your game. Again, the next step, right? And, you know, like I got to have irons that are fit for me that are, that play to the game that I'm trying to play. Right. Yep. Instead of the stocks irons that I'm playing off the shelf now that I've never had fitted for me. Um, I mean, but, considering you know they're what? stock irons, you're playing pretty good. Yeah. But so this is the thing in the last little while that I've, I've noticed is I used to always miss short. Yep. Now I'm if I'm missing, I might miss short a few times, but I'm missing long more than I'm missing short. Well, you're not afraid. Like we talked about this before, right? A couple of a while ago. Um, you can't be afraid to be long. Nope. And, and I mean, granted, there are holes where you're like, there's trouble long. I'd rather miss short. Yep. Well, absolutely. But a lot of times, even like that's when I'm chipping, generally speaking, I'm I you know that's that's where my touch comes in and different like different things like that because I'm like I, I'm okay to be a little bit long, just get it there, yeah. and that's where you you know that's how we start avoiding some of those duff chips because you're not trying to be so fine. It's the same with your approach shots. If you're if you're late going up there like today, I seen you hit you you actually club down on yep. se- on 17 you had a club in your hand and I, I seen you go back and i asked you after you, you i'm like i clubbed up I, I i was like did you club up or did you club no, down I clubbed down and, and you're like i clubbed down and i'm that's, like and you were still over so <laughs> long right so that's just the evolution of the game as well right like you know uh, it does make you feel good to know that you can hit some of these shots now and, and you know birdies are coming up birdie opportunities at least are coming a little more frequently even though i'm not converting a ton of them but well, you can be more aggressive. With Remember, it. during that six-week period, like, you were getting I, zero. I, I didn't have a look at birdie. No, no, you you didn't if, even if, you if didn't I, even know what a birdie was, right? <laughs> and if I if I had a birdie opportunity, it was a fucking forty-five foot putt. Yeah, right. So now it's coming a little more. I do get birdies on the scorecards, and 
birdie opportunities like today that I didn't convert, but that is what it is. That's, that's going to be the my best. God. I would mean, like it, it, to speak for birdie opportunities. I mean, I think about back to when we first started playing, and I'm like, what's a birdie? Yep. Like now, it's like now it's not uncommon. I mean, it's not uncommon for me to get two or three in a round sometimes, and, yep. and quite frequently. Yep. And I'm like. Wow, it's like, you, you know, when you put it in that perspective and you look back, I mean, I'm sure you feel the same way. Yep. It, it's just like, wow, our games have drastically changed. The ability to go out on a par 72 and relatively consistently play in mid-80s, have good rounds of lower 80s, and have some pretty crappy rounds too of maybe, maybe high 80s or low 90s. Yeah. Low 90s are my bad rounds, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah like, the, But I mean, we used to... We used to struggle to break 100, dude, like or 110 or 115 or whatever it was. Yeah. But, I mean, those days seem like just such a – so long ago. I think I've hit 100 a couple times this year. But, I mean, those days are days that you're just – you have nothing. Like, I literally have nothing. Well, like, literally everything has to go yeah. wrong for you to get yeah. there. But, you know, where the game is now, I'm, I'm happy, right? Like, I'm, I'm sad to see the season wind down, truthfully, and we got to find somewhere to play this winter. That's for sure. Oh yeah, man. We'll find. We'll find. Uh, we're definitely going to be finding a sim league, uh, a sim league for Somewhere. sure. Um, but I mean, our season uh, has been a resounding success. I mean, right. Mulligans and Hackers took a little step back uh, as our as our league just because we had other things on the go. But I mean, still successful. We set, we had seven tournaments. Uh, we had three winners. Um, I had four wins. Alvin had two wins, and Boy yeah. uh, Boyan had had yeah. one win um so i mean you know it was even the, the, the other tournaments we played in like, like the halo tournament and canada day tournament and those type of things the, the, the t- club championship club championship yeah that was the, again another experience we, we've never played a club championship and just all all different pressure situations yeah. and, and different things, right? Like, I mean, I, I think about it now, like, and I'm so like, it, the club well, we both did, but I mean, it, it is that's okay. It's our first one. Yeah. I mean, you know, we think about it now. You go to play it in the club championship next year. You think we're going to play that bad? Probably. Not. I think we're going to be ready. Yeah. I think we'll be. I think we'll be like, okay, this is old hat. It was good we're, two days too. We're we're so we're here. Fun. We're here to play. Like we've done this fun. before. Yep. Um, winning the Halo this year was was was. A lot of fun. Oh yeah, so they uh, so they got rid of the handicaps. That's how we won. <laughs> they, they, Mac had been saying the last couple of years that if you're going to allow people to use gimme strings and and buy and and you know for yep. to to make money for Halo and stuff, he's like you have to get rid of the handicaps. So that's what they did. They got rid of the handicaps and we ended up winning, which is awesome. Yep. I mean, I, I I wanted to win that tournament because I'm not quite sure <sighs> next year if we're going to be. We, yeah, we'll have it. We'll have a Mulligans and Hackers team in there. Yeah, but we uh, got we had to find a way to win that one. We did have to find a way to win that one because I don't know if we're going to be back there next year. But uh, you and I, anyways, right? Uh, we played so well. That was so good. That was awesome. That was a great again a great day. I mean, we just had so many highlights over the last you know over our golf season, right? I mean, you know, playing the hat. I mean, I remember days when it was break a hundred day at the hat for Alvin. Yep. And I mean yep. now now look, you're you're shooting mid mid eighties most of the time. You know, the occasional well, high eighties. When when we would play Medicine Hat before we had the membership here, like first couple of years we were playing golf, that was the thing. If we went to Medicine Hat, it was, it was Alvin's going to try and break a hundred. Yep. Right. And now I. It, again break 100 in your sleep it, pretty well pretty much uh, so again we see the evolution of our golf game and and that's what we want we want to keep growing and keep building on it and getting better right and, you know maybe single digit handicap is not for you this year but you're you're not going to be far off of it when you start next year no and, and i mean i think like this past season we didn't do a sim league you, we I, we definitely had a little bit to get I going agree. when we hit the I ground, agree. right? Was, the year uh, before when we did the sim league, yeah. I felt a lot better coming out of the winter. Like I didn't have as much rush to uh, shake off and things. I think that was, yeah, it was, I wasn't going to play a sim league last year, and I think that actually affected us more than I think than I thought. This year, we definitely will be playing a sim league. Well, I think even if you're just swinging the clubs once, once a week, a week. Ju- just just to I get still, the swings, right? I, mean, I still do a lot of work home, at yep. home. Uh, got a net coming for the backyard yeah you were saying that i'd I, i'd love to build a once i get that car out of my freaking garage i'd love to build a simulator in there yeah well i'm gonna have to have a key to that but just swinging clubs all the time you know what because that's that's what i like to do now right yeah no yeah it, well it's an it, it is an addiction right i mean it's funny because it's you know um i can't remember who i was talking about the other day Oh, somebody had said they're like, you know, 
my wife's always well my wife always says like oh you are you done golfing yet or done this or that and i'm like you know my wife is literally like she's the most understanding uh, and i mean yours is yours as well uh, i mean are, are, are very very understanding when it comes to the to our golf it's like they're like okay you're, you guys are golfing, but you know, this is what I need you to get done at some point this weekend. Like make some time for that. And, but I mean, my wife knows she's, she knows that when the weekend comes around and I'm not busy, it's golf. Yeah. But this, this is like, literally we, we talked about it before that, you know, fa- our families, our kids are up and pretty yeah. much independent. I, I mean, my friggin' to... my, my middle child or uh, my second oldest just got, just got his license today. Yeah, so... And I mean, I got one left. That's that. Yeah. That's young. I, I mean, one, you're. I got one in grade twelve graduating this year. Like, yeah. So you're gonna be an empty nester right away. <laughs> what, do you, what do you do? What do you do with your time? Like, and I'm so glad that you know, back in the day when we played a few rounds, we were like, "This is gonna be our. This is gonna be our retirement sport. This is the sport we're gonna play together until we can't." Well, there's nothing beats you know nothing beats getting the boys together on a mm-hmm. Saturday morning and again, like again today, Clark and Dave were out with us today. And I'm yeah. just Like you know, this, that is the crew that I I enjoy the most having a well and it's been a couple of weeks because you know we've been yeah. busy i mean you got out with clark last weekend and you know you guys you guys golfed with some people but it's nice when they like even dave said today he's like it's so much fun when we golf together yeah. like the group the group is just just fun we all you know we make fun of each other we have some good laughs you know we make some good shots we make some bad shots but it's it's just a fun four hours or four and, and a half is. hours and it's so easy to be around those dudes too right like like they as a foursome that's the foursome I really enjoy playing golf with. And yeah, we've got some other people like Darren and Megan that we play with and, you know, some other people that slot in there like Boyan and stuff. Yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, they fit right in. Right. But that four, that core four that I call them. Yeah. Know, Dave Clark, you and me, that's, that's the crew I like, I like to get out with on the weekends and, you know, maybe when, oh, again, it's not Clark, Clark will play whenever, but you know, when Dave gets to that point where he's getting to be an empty nester, He's exactly. not too much. For, he's not too far off either, because his. Yeah. I think his young. Well, his youngest is the same age as my middle one. So. So I'm. I'm thinking. Two years. Yeah, I'm trying to convince Clark next year to come and do an Alberta Golf Tour event with us. And I think he'd do good. I think, like yeah. he. Well, it's just I, the experience for him too, right? And I mean, he'd he'd be in the D flight, and I mean, he'd he'd play fine. Yeah. I mean, he's got the capability. Why well, we didn't see much of it this year, but. He does have that game in there somewhere he that, does. I mean, if he if he puts together a round, he could compete for, for his deflate championship or, or title, for sure. I mean, you know, it's it's there. Yeah, it is. I, I mean, I, and I was saying to Dave today, I mean, he's got that game too. I said to him, I was like, you play best when you just don't care, man. Yep. Like, you and came again, down a few weeks is, back. Game is the same type of thing. Play a little more. Yep. Again, play Golf is the sport where you have to keep. We we talk about taking. We we off. spend way more time than those guys do, yeah. and and that's so that's the difference. It, right? You have to keep playing it because, you know, I found that when I took when I only played like one round there for almost a week and a half, when I went down, I had to kind of find some things again. Oh, dude, that was me today. I had to oh, find yeah. my short game. It was kind of funny when, when you came down and you took that nine on number one, and I was watching your short game. I was like, oh, it's the first fucking thing to go. Is like your ability to to to, to finesse yourself. Thank around God, my right? putter was working. So, because that would have been a mess. But yeah, no, hundred percent, man. I like, and it's not even. It, it's funny because I used to say short game as a whole, but it's it's the chipping. It, it's it's your yeah. chipping that that is the first thing to go. Yeah. Like I can still I still putted well today. Um, you did, though. but but and it saved me some strokes for sure. But I mean, chipping wise, it's like if you don't have that feel. And 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 you don't spend the time doing that, you know, a few times a week. It's like, oh, this is so foreign. This is a foreign object in my hand. What am I doing here? How do I make contact with this ball? Okay, this is gonna be fun. I mean, it's a funny game that way. You you just gotta play lots. But I mean, overall, the our twenty twenty four season, I think, uh, was, a, was an outstanding success. It was a resounding success for this guy. I mean, you know, I look back at the season, and. Even even the poor sections of it doesn't doesn't factor into the how how successful the year was. That was just blips in the in the season where you know there's so many positives. Yeah. So many so many experiences and positives that came out of the season. The the poor play for six weeks doesn't even remotely change the fact that it was such a good season. I agree. So, do you have any goals on the top of your head that you are thinking about for next year? Before we cut this pod, 
goals for next year? Um, Anything stick out in your mind that you that you wanna wanna try and attain for next season? Mm. Oh, that's a good question. That's a good put, question. Put, put you I, on the spot here. That I hadn't even really kind of contemplated because the season's not over yet. Um, I know it's coming. It, it's it's ending sooner than we'd hope. But yeah, I mean, but so all right. Here's a here's a here's a goal. Um, kind of like shortlist it right off the top. I want to get a W on the Alberta Golf Tour next year. I like it. I like and it. If that, that, mean, if that means D flight or C flight, I don't care. But I want a W on the tour next year. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm right there with you. I'd love. I'd love to get one. And I think you know, if we keep working at our games, I don't think that's it, it's too. I mean, it's not out of the realm of possibilities. Yeah. I mean, you're gonna have to play well. I mean, we've seen enough events where we've seen kind of what it takes at each kind of flight to yep. win. Uh, you know, like we usually where the winning scores are, but I think that's a great goal. I think so. Uh, I think another one for you is probably, um, hopefully by the beginning of next year, you're rocking some new clubs in your bag and you're getting acclimated to a fitted set of irons. That would be cool. Yep. Uh, um, that's, that's, that's one that's I would a, think that, for you. For me, that's not a goal. That's more of a process. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. So, so I'm looking at that as a process, not necessarily a goal, but, uh, yeah, uh, I, I W on the Alberta Golf Tour would be something I would hang my hat on next year. I think. I think for me, um, I I would agree with that. W on the Golf Tour or the Alberta Golf Tour would be fun. I never even really thought about that one, but that just goes without saying. But uh, um, I want to I want to only break eighty out there. Like I want to I want to shoot like a a low or like a mid seventies round next year. And I I want to just if I can find the consistency throughout my bag. I, I want to want to be able to hit, you know, I spent so much time working to get consistency with my driver. I don't want to lose that now, but I want, I want to be able to hit, you know, my two woods and my hybrid a little bit better so they can give me more options so I can be more aggressive. And if I can do that, I think I can really shoot some nice scores. Now, I know you did. I heard you bring it up with uh, the club pro at medicine hat. Are lessons uh, in the cards for you? Um, I did, I did talk to Wayne about it. Um, he kind of said he'd have to look at the cross handed swing thing. And I understand that. Like, I mean, it's, it's tough to give lessons to, for me, it's more, not so much swing lessons is what I'm looking for, because I mean, I understand it's hard to give me, um, feedback and, and different things because my setup is so weird, but it's more like aiming and, and, you know, different things like that, like the process of doing that stuff. Um, uh, yeah, it's something I'm definitely going to think long and hard about and potentially do. Yep. I mean, it, it, it could unlock a, another part of my game, which is, you know, I'd be excited about. Um, uh, up until this point, we've kind of done it ourselves, right? I've never had a lesson. So, I mean, yeah, me neither. And, I mean, that's it, it's crazy to think that here we are in 11.4 and a 13.6 handicaps, and we've gotten down here with zero lessons. Like, mm -hmm. just, just, just the blood, sweat, and tears just, of our own effort. Just and smacking golf balls <laughs> right but I, I, and i mean that's another thing it's you know i want to i almost want to put a the the more i think about my golf game is the more i think about almost having a regimen like there's one or two practice days a week when i go and play you know working on things like just like i have a practice plan for how i how my coaching goes and my teams go I want to almost implement that kind of style of process next year for my game. Um, I've actually thought of something like that as well. And, and, and just be like, you know, we're, we're, it's going to be a practice day today. You know, this is what we're working on tomorrow. We're going to, you know, today we're going to do an hour on the range. We're going to do an hour short game or whatever, whatever it entails. Yep. But practicing with a purpose. Um, I will tell you, like when I first started playing, it was just hit as many balls as you could. Right. And then as we started getting a little better, it was, hit balls kind of trying to figure things out yep. and then this year you know for the first half it was kind of like that and then the last half was okay i need to figure some stuff out and i need to start doing some drills that have meaning that can that can give me markers to go back to because we talk about that yep. and and i mean that's what's helped my driver i found the markers that's what's helped my wedges i found the markers i mean my irons there for a while i was pulling everything left because i was too close to the ball and i mean again markers so then you know, but you're slowly figuring that stuff out yourself. So if you spend more time and you have a basically a, a dedicated plan as to what you're doing, 
I think we can get more out of our golf game that way. And then, then, I mean, when you go to attack the golf course, it's, you know, you're like, today I'm working on this and it's, and it's less, less about worrying about the score. And I've done that more. I, I always feel like as soon as our season's over, cause I'm just always so locked in to try and win. It's like, as soon as our season's over, I'm like, I'm going to go out there today and I'm going to try and do this. Cause I got nothing to lose. Yep. Right. Yep. And just play more with that kind of attitude. I think it'll be, it'll be, should be a really good 2025 season too. I think we've set ourselves up pretty nice. I think so. I think we were, you know, both of us this year was, was a great <laughs> stepping stone year to some really good goals, really good accomplishments, really good experiences. And I think I'm hoping, and I think that, you know, it's in the cards that 2025, will be even better than we what we experienced this year. And I mean one last thing, I mean twenty twenty five, if everything keeps going the way it's going, we'll have our hundredth episode. Oh yeah, yeah, we're only yeah. twenty nine episodes away. Oh, yeah. Which is crazy. Crazy when you think about it, man. Yeah. Like that's... from a podcast that started that started in our you know, on the back deck or in our basement or or whatever, just talking about our podcast and, and mulligans and hackers and everything else, to what we've what we're doing now where we're doing a bunch of guest pods different things like that talk still talking about our game but we're starting to connect with a lot of people in the golf world Agreed. which is which is insanity i mean it, it's just crazy the different the things that continuously happen i mean for us to get to the century mark in the podcast is going to be a pretty big milestone i mean we just celebrated 50 not long ago yep. but i mean it's already 21 episodes ago yeah that isn't that crazy yeah. well again we started we've dropped an episode every monday now since last november yep yep right? so if we get to november this year dropping one every monday that's going to be a solid full year of dropping an episode every monday yep which i, I truly i didn't think we were not that we weren't capable of doing but i didn't know that was kind of in the cards for us to do and yeah we've got some more guest pods coming up we're going to do some more you know pods of just you and me shooting shit about we're gonna we're gonna eventually start talking about some some pro golf stuff yeah, well. yeah, for sure. We're going to get into some of our strong, very opinionated opinions on that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we can well, have some right? discussions on that for sure. So, you know, and... But, I mean, for everybody that's, uh, I mean, you know, it, it's just, it's interesting because golf is, golf is, you know, when you look at golf on the on the surface, it's a game that you're, you know, you're chasing a little white ball or a colored ball nowadays around, whatever, and you're trying to trying to see the fewest number of strokes you can to put this little ball in a hole, as Robin Williams would say. And, uh, I mean, people look at it as just a game, but it's so much more than that. Like it's, I mean, when I go to the golf course, it's relaxing to walk, you know, you get to hang out with your buddies. It's, you know, it's a decompression. You, if you're walking, I mean, your mental state's better. Usually, I mean, you get to decompress and do your thing. You're, um, you're getting healthier. You're, you know, you're doing a whole bunch of different things. And then, and the people in the golf world are like, once you get in there, it's, it's, it's so cool. This is one of the things about when I used to have anxiety about having guests on the podcast. Cause again, you're strange people and not more, but golf is so easy to talk about. Yep. Like you just start talking about golf and it's like, yeah, okay. Well, four hours later, you're, you're like, well, we could keep talking for another four hours, but yep. You got it. I mean, that's just, and again, I'm so into it and, and still say I'm relatively naive about the sport, but like, you know, you can, you can do the, the gear geek shit, you know, the course shit and, you know, like your experiences in the game. I mean, like everybody has their own, everybody has their own golf experience. Yep. You know, and and their own. Sport. Yep. And it's, you know, it's so easy to, you know, I want to hear it. Right. I want to hear it. So when we have guests on the podcast, like I want to hear everything about your golf experience, whether you started when you were like eight or whether you started like a, a year ago. Right. Whether you have a brand or you have a social media platform, like I want to hear this stuff, and it's been a lot of fun chatting with some people, and and uh, we've got some more cool people coming on down the down the road here over the winter. Yeah, if you guys are new listeners, uh, if you're a new listener, or or and you want to have if you want to be on the pod, reach out to us. I mean, yeah. if we if we don't talk to you or or we've talked to you about it in the past, and you know we've kind of we've touched base on that, but we haven't gone anywhere with it, or you guys haven't decided it wasn't the time was right, reach out to us. We'd love to have you on the pod. We will literally have just about anybody on the pod, right? Because it's it, the sport is so easy to talk about. I mean, right now everybody we everybody has a story, and and I want to hear it. I, I mean, right now we've we've 
been lucky enough to have a lot of women that have that have been joining us on the pod with their different stories right. and and their different uh you know journeys and journeys through golf um which is pretty cool which is stellar uh, a lot of a lot of cool stories a lot of great episodes you know um a lot of super cool um you know events and different things that some of these some of these women are doing um and i mean again it's it's just a fun environment um i mean outside of that i i'd love to know what your guys's golf goals are moving yeah, into 2025 go. yeah like reach out to us let They're us know in the us comments the on, on instagram tiktok twitter we're facebook on, we're on all of it so yeah we're on so all we're on all the socials let us know let us know what some of your 2025 goals are uh yeah and i mean if you guys you know what what would you like to hear from us like when alvin and i sit down and talk there's going to be episodes coming up where we're going to have to find some co- topics of discussion so is there if the, if there's anything in particular you guys would love for us to talk about or want to want to know what we think about let us know yeah we'd, we'd love we'd love to read through it and and we'll, uh, uh oblige you guys we'll chat about that stuff yeah man but i i think alvin i think our 2024 season has been a success and Agreed. i mean this was a good pod and a good a good way to kind of do a season recap and we've, we've got a one more tournament to go the iron man one that'll be an interesting pod to talk about yeah it's gonna for be sure. an interesting experience but we'll do that on that pod and uh we'll keep doing some some uh topics and some guests over the winter and and keep it going yeah man all right well here's the 20 or the 2024 season and we'll catch you guys later take care later